So tonight I'm going to talk about the future of a certain kind of seafood called sharks. Other people call this seafood biodiversity. I'm going to take you on a journey outside of this room and I'm actually going to take you to the moon to show you the rise of the earth over the moon. And there's one very important point to take home from this slide that although the earth may be covered with cloud, it's underlain mainly by water. The earth was very inappropriately named. 70% of the planet that we live on is covered by water. We are terrestrially bound organisms. And of course, we have a very terrestrial view of the oceans. Indeed, this is the view that many of us have of the oceans. We can't have any other view. Very few of us scuba dive. Very few of us are lucky enough to be marine scientists. The other view that we might have about the sustainability of fisheries might come from our supermarket. And if you go to a supermarket day after day after day, you will still see it full of fish. So supermarkets also, like our terrestrial bound view of the oceans, give us a very imperfect and false view of fisheries because of the cereal depletion that Daniel has just described to us. As one fish runs out, another fish replaces that fish on the shelves, giving the false view that our oceans are inexhaustible. So myself, Daniel, John, and many of you others in the audience who I know are marine biologists are very privileged in having the opportunity of looking below the surface of the water and looking under the veil that hides many of the mysteries of the ocean from us. And I'm just going to introduce you to some of the mysteries that I get to work on on a day-to-day -day basis, including the whale shark, the largest fish in the world. These are effectively the baleen whales of the shark world. They swim around the world's ocean, hoovering up uh, zooplankton, mainly from the tropical waters. We have the temperate cold water equivalent, the basking shark, which was formerly found off the coast of British Columbia and is now the first fish listed under the Species at Risk Act in Canada. We have filter feeding rays as well, the largest rays in the world, the mobulid rays, including the manta ray. And the manta ray gave us a wonderful experience last year by highlighting that it wasn't just one species, but the world's manta rays include two species, a coastal species as well as an ocean-going species. Moving away from the bottom of the food web, the baleen sharks, we can move to the iconic and charismatic large predators. The great white shark swims across the oceans of the world, feeding on mammal aggregations on subtropical islands. We have the ocean-going uh, fish-feeding thresher sharks, and the iconic and charismatic um, and enigmatic hammerhead sharks, which occasionally gather together in vast shoals for purposes we think that are related <laughs> to breeding. So what's the problem with sharks? Well, the problem with sharks is that they have some unfortunate bedfellows. They swim with other fish, fish that we take in very large industrial fisheries, such as the tunas, swordfishes, and marlins. And the problem with sharks is that they tend to be live bearing. They tend to produce very few offspring, very often every second or every third year. This means that their reproductive capacity, their capacity to replace the numbers lost to these fisheries is much, much less than the tuna or the fish that they run with. It means that it's almost inevitable that sharks will decline simply as the collateral damage of the industrialized fisheries. Sharks are, of course, not valueless, it actually transpires that parts of the shark are incredibly valuable. As sharks are taken in the collateral damage of these industrial fisheries, their fins are removed very often while the fish is alive and the carcass is very often wastefully discarded. Why are these fins removed? Well, these fins are removed to supply the demand for soup, shark fin soup. If you go into any Asian supermarket of the world, you will see things like abalone, sea cucumber, but in amongst that, there will be shark fins of all shapes and sizes. <coughs> a small hand-sized fin or a kilo of those hand-sized fins is worth about $200. We can only speculate at the value of those very, very large fins there. We know from some analyses done by researchers at the University of British Columbia that approximately 38 million sharks pass through the markets of Hong Kong before they go on to um, end up in restaurants and wedding banquets throughout Asia. So the question is how sustainable is 38 million sharks? 
Well, this question was raised more than 20 years ago by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And they set up the Shark Specialist Group specifically to answer this question amongst a wider mission to promote the sustainable use, wise management and conservation of all sharks, rays and chimeras. And you can visit our website there. So the Shark Specialist Group uh, pulled together 300 of the world's experts and they spent 10 years assessing the status, not just of the sharks that I've shown you, but all of the known sharks, rays and chimeras in the world. And you might be surprised to know that that number at the time totaled 1,044 species. We discover a new shark every two weeks and that's been the case for the last 30 years. So we're certainly chasing a shifting baseline. So now we can answer the question of the sustainability of the collateral damage of industrial fisheries that Daniel has talked about. Here we have an oceanic pelagic shark of which there are 21. And these are the main ocean going predators that swim with tunas and so on. And we now know that 11, half of these are threatened with an elevated risk rate of extinction. So these are now one of the most threatened groups of organisms on the face of the earth, second only possibly to sturgeons. We know that a third of all sharks and rays and chimeras are threatened with an elevated risk of extinction. That puts them on a par with a, an extinction rate faced by amphibians. F the extinction rate faced by sharks, rays and chimeras is far in excess of that faced by mammals and birds. I'll just go back. I too have some pretty maps. Um, <laughs> there's not as much contrast in them and that's mainly because they're pink. And this is a map showing the distribution of those threatened oceanic pelagic sharks. So the reddest colors there show up to 15, 16 species per 10 kilometers squared that are threatened. So this is not actually a map of fishing or the map of where fishing is. It's just the map of where those threatened sharks are. And we can see that if we look away and look only at the ice-free zones of the world, that in the ice-free zones, there are threatened sharks. There is no refuge from fishing for threatened sharks. It does mean that if we take an opportunity to conserve sharks, we can pick anywhere on the globe and we can do some good. So that's a very depressing story. Um, what can we do about it? And indeed, a lot of fisheries management organizations are having successes. And even today, I learned that the International Commission um, for the conservation of Atlantic tunas has banned the catch of the three hammerhead species and the oceanic white tip that you've just seen in that photograph. But I want to focus more on a local initiative and that local initiative comes from a nascent NGO called the Shark Truth and they work within the Chinese community to stop the soup one bowl at a time. And their mission is really, or their motto, is that we can have double happiness. We can have sharks in our sea instead of our bowls. And last year, they ran a wedding competition and to enter this competition, you had to stop serving soup at your Chinese wedding. And I'll just show you some of the pictures and some of the narratives from the couples that committed not to serve shark fin soup at their wedding. Now this is my favorite, I'll read it out. <laughs> God gives life as a chance to love. Why take this chance away from Harry on our wedding day? And this final one. So not everybody entered the competition, but 38 couples last year in Vancouver committed to have shark fin soup free weddings. That constitutes saving 420 species of shark. More importantly, it constitutes um, an education of 4,200 people in Vancouver as to the sustainability consequences that sharks face and the consequences of their choice to eat or to not eat soup. So I stand here today and I think I've given you um, a warning that we could face a future without sharks, but I hope I've also given you a sign or a choice and some hope that we can do something about this. Thank you. <laughs>